Here I've got my old iPhone 7. Looks pretty much the same as any other phone of its type. And on the back you can see the original logo. What we're gonna do is go ahead and remove that today and replace it with this flashing logo instead. Of course you can see um, it probably would have made sense for Apple to maybe put the fingerprint scanner into the Apple on the new design rather than having it down here on the home button. But of course, we're not going to have a home button on the new phone. So, uh, you know, if you want to do something creative, this is one option. Obviously, it will affect your warranty. We are still going to replace the waterproof gasket or water resistant gasket on the front. You'll also need to have these screwdrivers. So we have our regular pentalobe that we use for the bottom two screws. We will also have a triple zero Phillips PH zero 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 for the internal screws and then or some of the internal screws because you're also going to need to have this new tri-wing and this is the one that works for the Apple Watch and for the iPhone 7. It's very hard to see these you know up close here without having a microscope but if you don't use the right type of driver you will definitely have some problems. So you want to make sure that at each step of the way here you are using the correct screwdriver. So we'll start by powering the phone off first. Always do that before you start uh, anything else if possible. And once the screen shuts down completely, we will take our pentalobe driver and remove the two screws from the bottom of the phone. And this opens slightly different than the other phones. It's actually gonna slide down and open up to the right, kind of like you're opening a book from the back. You have to watch out for cables that run along the right-hand side of the phone. So do be very cautious and keep in mind, it is possible to cause some damage to your phone if you grab the wrong screwdriver, if you're not very precise in the way that you apply pressure on the front to remove the screen. So there are a number of things that can go wrong. You want to be very careful before you try to perform this yourself. But we'll go ahead and get these two screws out of the bottom to start with. And at that point, there will still be, as I mentioned earlier, some adhesive that goes around the outside of the frame. And that's what makes it slightly more difficult to open. You want to, want to be patient, take your time, don't put a lot of stress on the glass, obviously, because that can cause it to crack, and then you'll end up replacing a screen in addition to uh, any other work that you're going to be doing on the inside. There are a number of ways you can go about it. Some people like to use a suction cup. I like to use a very thin tool down at the bottom just to prop it open slightly, and then I'll take something that's a little stronger and kind of work my way around. Also remember, you don't want to go too deep underneath the screen. There are some components right under here in the front and in a few other areas where you can cause damage. You want to make sure that for the most part, use that little guide on the side, the white outline right next to the LCD, the very thin one on the right and left hand side of the phone if you're looking at it upright. And that'll kind of make sure that you don't go in too far. I'm going to use this iFlex and see if we can't just kind of prop this up. You can see this is a little thinner than the iSesimo. So for getting into small spaces, this will usually do the trick. I'll start by applying some heat with a heat gun on the front side of the phone, just around the perimeter. If you don't have a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer. It will take a little bit longer, but you don't need a huge amount of heat here. I usually try to get the surface nice and warm, but definitely not hot enough to burn you. If you go too high with your temperature, you can actually damage the LCD. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for a second, and when we get this nice and warm, we'll go in with the what I call the tail end of this iFlex tool. You almost have to go kind of at an angle, so you're not you're almost sliding it towards the top a bit and not uh, flat across, if that makes sense. And once you get underneath the edge, we just wanna lift it up a tiny bit. Don't go too deep in there. Remember, we have some components that can be damaged. And then I'm gonna switch over to a thin plastic tool. That's kind of my preference. I really don't like dragging metal across glass or across other metal surfaces. So uh, that's up to you entirely. But as you can see, I'm just going in barely inside of the frame, just the width of that thin white line that goes around the two sides. And then I'm gonna come across the bottom and you can see that it's lifting up slightly, but make sure that you keep total control over this because uh, we have some cables inside there right beyond where I'm prying, so we don't wanna go too deep. And also, if you lift the screen up too far, you can actually tear those cables. So the main thing I'm doing is just kind of working my way through the adhesive here up to the top end, and then it's gonna be a little difficult to get through there because we have those tabs, but you can still kind of just barely get along the inside right where that adhesive gasket is, at least part of it, and that kind of weakens it by going over it with the pry tool like this. So I've kind of made a complete circle, not circle, but I've completely gone around the outside of the frame and now I'm gonna go back the other direction until it doesn't really feel too sticky. Now here's the tricky part. You can see the bottom's kind of coming out a bit. 
we're going to slightly lift, but I'm actually pulling it that direction. So it's going towards the bottom of the phone because we're going to have some hooks, uh, I want to call them tabs rather, at the top that go in under the edge of the frame. So until you pull this thing towards the bottom end of the phone far enough, you're not going to be able to open it from left to right like I showed you in the beginning. So you can see I've got one of these thin pry tools. I'm kind of working it to push the screen down from the top. I found this to work pretty well for me. And then at the same time, of course, I'm going to be just kind of pulling it very gently at the bottom. And once we get it down far enough, we'll be able to go ahead and open that up. You want to have something nearby that you can kind of prop the screen on because if you don't and it flops over, it puts tension on those cables in the inside and that can lead to some serious problems. So uh, you can see again, I'm just kind of prying this as I go. And if I've got those hooks completely disengaged, I should be able to get the phone open at this point. If it feels like it's stuck, it could be the adhesive or you might still have one of those hooks engaged underneath the top end. So make sure that those are clear. And then we're gonna very carefully open this up. And remember, we don't wanna go any further than we have to because those cables are just super, super sensitive. If you thought the old phones were, these are even worse. And you can see here, I've got some pieces of adhesive, just little strings and stuff that are still attached to the phone. So don't worry too much about that. Again, we're gonna go ahead and replace that entire seal around the front. And from here, let's go ahead and get this open. And you can see we've got just this stringy stuff everywhere. So it pretty much gets destroyed as you're taking the phone apart. I've given up on trying to preserve the original adhesive. Uh, we have screws in here also, remember, that are going to be tri-lobe. So you cannot do this with a Phillips driver on some of the screws. You have to make sure that you have the right screw in each situation. So you'll see that I've got two very different handles on my screwdrivers. I do that purposely because I like to be able to just quickly visually identify what I'm working with. Here is a tri-lobe screwdriver. So anytime you see me use the blue screwdriver here, that is going to indicate that we have those uh, tri-lobe tr type of screws. And I think that a lot of the problems that people have with these can be avoided if you listen. You can audibly hear when your bit kind of drops down into the position it's supposed to be in because if it's not there, you're not going to get a grip and you're going to start chewing through the screw. So once you kind of feel it or hear it just kind of snap into place there, you'll know that you have it seated correctly. And from that point, I'm going to apply some pressure from the top and also make sure the bottom end doesn't slip. So if you use both hands to do this, you can just kind of apply the tension or apply a slight amount of pressure at the top, hold on to the bottom where the blade is so that it doesn't slip, and then very gently turn the screwdriver and you should feel it turn. If it doesn't feel like the screw is turning, stop what you're doing and figure out why because once these screws strip, they need to go into the trash can because you don't wanna put them back in the phone. And of course, the, at that, that's gonna leave you in a situation where, well, where do I get screws to replace the ones that I ruined? And the answer is you can probably go online and order them somewhere by now. Uh, but when new phones come out, they don't, they're not generally easy to get a hold of because they machine these specifically for whatever model that particular phone happens to be. So good luck finding something when a brand new phone comes out from a company such as Apple. They generally don't uh, have those readily available. So you can see I'm just kind of repeating the process. There are four screws that go into this panel and the panel will cover up the connector for the battery and for the screen. We're gonna go ahead and take the screen completely out of the phone just to be safe. Fortunately, we don't have to deal with the home button because that's a whole uh, other area where you need to know exactly what you're doing, otherwise you have problems. So you can see now I've got all the screws removed from that panel. And from here, if you just kind of give it a slight push down on one side, it'll kind of pop up and you might feel a bit of adhesive underneath here. Just go ahead and grab that and lift it out of position. First thing, of course, we want to do is disconnect the battery. Please, if you're making videos, you know, video tutorials for phone repairs, make sure that people are disconnecting their batteries. There are so many reasons. I don't want to even go into the explanation here. I'll do that separately some other time. But you must remove the power source before you start poking around inside the phone. Otherwise, you're relying on luck to be on your side and not break anything. So I'm going to take some precision tweezers, get in between this little post and this other connector and very carefully lift up underneath the metal panel. So this requires precision. You obviously don't wanna poke a hole in anything. 
You don't want to lift on the wrong part, but if you get right underneath that little middle panel and lift gently, it'll pop right off, and now we have our power disconnected. Up here at the top, we have another panel that needs to be removed, and it is going to require a different type of screwdriver. So go ahead and unplug these other connectors down here at the bottom. These both go to the display assembly. There's one that's kind of buried underneath that first one that I just unplugged. And then we're going to go ahead and switch screwdrivers back to our PH000. Remember, these are different screws. You don't want to make the mistake that I've seen quite a few people make and try to use the wrong driver. You've got two screws that go into this panel, and underneath it, there's kind of a cushion. I want to call it a cushiony substance. So after you take this out, you'll notice that the plate kind of lifts up on its own. It's not a big deal, but when we go to reinstall it, we need to make sure that we are aware that the panel's gonna wanna lift up until we kinda hold it down and we wanna keep that cushion piece in there for whatever purpose it serves and make sure that we don't lose it. Also, if I haven't already mentioned this, you wanna make sure to keep these screws in order for obvious reasons. Many of them are different sizes and different types and if you put the wrong screw in the wrong spot, you can have problems. Go ahead and lift this panel out once you have the screws removed. And uh, if you look at it carefully, you'll be able to see there's this little cushiony thing that's going to push up where I was pointing there. And don't worry about that too much now. When we come back to it, we will deal with it. Also, make a note of the orientation of this cable. If you plug it in, and it's possible to plug it in upside down, uh, <laughs> don't ask me to explain how right now. But if you're not careful, take a look at this, and you'll see that the cable actually leads down. So that little horseshoe shape goes down and not up. If you put that thing in wrong, you're going to have problems also, uh, you can always come back to the video and watch it again and figure out what the proper orientation is. We'll come back and clean up this adhesive at some point because we want to have a nice clean surface before we put the new stuff in. Now we do need to get the battery out of the phone and this can be tricky. In order to make it slightly easier, I'm going to remove these three screws that hold the Taptic engine in place. So this will give us a little more access to these pull tabs on the adhesive underneath the battery. It is not going to completely remove the unit from the phone. So once you take these three screws out, you're gonna kind of fold it over towards the lightning port. Now you could go through a little more work if you wanted to take it completely out of the frame, but I find by just folding this over, and be very careful of course, it's still attached there with a small cable, and just lay it over on its side. If you need something to hold it there, you can use that. And notice that we have some cables running underneath there. So again, we wanna be very careful while we're working here in this area, especially knowing that lithium ion batteries and lithium polymer batteries can be volatile if they're punctured, if you put too much pressure, anything like that. So you really wanna be careful here and just kind of peel this little tab back at the bottom end of the battery so that we can grab a hold of the white strip that's underneath it. If you've ever seen those little adhesive things you stick on your wall and when you're done with them, you just kind of pull straight down and they fall right off. Well, this works the same way in theory and it doesn't work 100% of the time. If you have a little practice with it, it certainly helps, but even in the best case scenario, once in a while these things don't cooperate. Now, fortunately, if it gets really bad and you tear it off right in the middle, you know, you only get part of it, you can usually kind of reach inside, again, very carefully with some precision tweezers and grab a small amount of this white stuff and just kind of pull it straight, almost at a 45 degree angle. So I'm not going straight down, I'm not going straight up towards the ceiling, I'm just kind of coming out at an, at an angle here. One steady, smooth motion usually works the best. If you get lucky, you might get the entire strip. It's actually still pulling out at this point. These things end up being quite long when they're stretched out. And you see, yeah, I kind of lost my grip on it, but I can go back in there and grab a hold of it again and just keep pulling the thing slowly and steadily if possible. So you can see we got this all out in one piece. On rare occasion, when they've snapped off, I can usually get in there and grab a hold of it. You really want to try to avoid, you know, just using the old pry method on these things because these batteries are so sensitive nowadays. So uh, I got lucky on both of these. They actually both came out without too much trouble and didn't snap off halfway through. Hopefully that doesn't happen for you, but I'm going to go ahead and speed this up for a second. And you can see what we're left with after we get the whole thing peeled out. But the nice thing is the battery just comes right out of the case in one piece, not bent, not scraped, not poked or anything else. So uh, when these tabs cooperate, they really are very helpful. Now, the next thing we want to do, I'm just going to kind of put this 
haptic engine back in so it's not flapping around there. That could be dangerous, of course, if we're careless and end up snagging something on it. So it's just kind of in the way. We'll go ahead and get that installed real quick. And now we get to the fun part. That is prying this logo out from the housing. So as you can imagine, there is some adhesive on there. There are also cables in close proximity. So you want to be very careful when you're prying underneath this thing, not let your hand slip. Uh, you know, there's a lot of damage that can be done. So you want to be very careful when you get under the edge of this thing. And I wanted to try a couple different tools and see which one kind of worked best. I started out here initially with the razor blade just to kind of get underneath the edge. And I sort of got this thing to come up, but then I noticed part way through that you really got to have a lot of strength behind this thing as you're prying. So as opposed to the iPhone 6, for example, which you can really kind of go around the perimeter of it with a blade and just kind of pop it out. This one didn't cooperate quite as much. So I got a nice cutting tool with a handle attached to it instead of just my blade by itself. And I started working underneath here. And again, you'll see that it's just a bit of a struggle to kind of get this thing started. But once you do, you want to have something that will give you a little more leverage. And of course, we don't want to snap off the end of our blade and have that go flying, you know, anywhere along, uh, anywhere in the room or elsewhere. So once I got this thing just kind of started a bit, I did switch over to another tool. Pushing it through from the back obviously was not an option at this point. The iFlex tool actually helped sort of, but once again, not quite as much as I hoped that it would. Eventually I just ended up grabbing a slotted driver and kind of getting underneath here and lifting. And at a certain point you'll get it up enough that you can kind of grab a hold of it and just peel it out. Unfortunately, it's not tucked under the logic board uh, in a way that it kind of almost was on the previous model. So now we've got this thing taken apart. We've got the logo out from here. It's relatively downhill. We're going to go ahead and take our flashing logo out of the package. And unless you can read the language that's printed on it, you'll find that it's not particularly helpful. Now, when you get the logo out, you'll want to see if there's a thin piece of plastic on the surface of the apple itself. If there is, you'll probably want to go ahead and peel that off right now. This is going to lay down right inside, and there's actually enough room alongside the battery, between the battery and the logic board, to get this cable to lay in position. You'll probably find it easiest to pre-fold this cable so that it has a nice 90 degree angle on it. That way it'll sit up against the back case and still be able to fit between the battery and the logic board. Now I have no idea what any of this says, so if you're able to read it, good for you. But otherwise, <laughs> we'll just have to try to figure out how this works. Alright, let's go ahead and get our logo out of the package first. You see there's a little cushion in there included with it. Make sure you hold on to that. We'll just peel it off of this plastic sheet. And remember, if you have a thin piece of plastic on the outside of the logo, I'd recommend you peel that off now also. You can do it while it's in the housing, but it'll be easier now. I actually didn't take mine off. I had a hard time, as you can see. I was actually trying to see if there was something on there. It didn't look like there was, and after I got this whole thing installed, I could see there was a thin sheet of plastic on the outside. No big deal. You can always scrape that off later. In any case, we'll go ahead and place this inside the housing. I know this is going to be self-explanatory. Just kind of center that up and it fits perfectly. So they did a great job of cutting these things to be exactly the same shape as the Apple logo. Not sure what the trademark or copyright offices would have to say about that, but this one works. And once we get it installed, the next thing we're going to do is provide a light source. So uh, here's a look at our old logo. I'm going to hold on to that just in case I need it for something later on. And we have a set of LED lights that are built into that other separate cable. I want to make sure this is seated perfectly before we get the battery back inside, of course, so everything's nice and flush. And there you can see the two little white rectangles on the bottom of this. Those are the LED lights, and they will illuminate the logo once it is connected to the battery terminal. So this thing will function even when your phone is completely turned off. And you can turn it on and off at will, not a big deal. You can see here, if you don't pre-fold that cable, it's a little tougher to get it into the proper position. Once you have it lined up about where you want it to be, we'll want to add some double-sided adhesive or some of the OEM 
Apple battery stickers. I'll put some links down in the video description so you can see where to get those. With this one, I just use some red tape adhesive. It's pretty standard. You don't need something super sticky. You definitely do not want to put glue behind your battery. So I'm just going to have a couple strips in here that'll hold the battery in place. I'll go ahead and peel off the outer pieces. And then what we need to do is make sure that that connector lines up right on top of the battery terminal. And then we're going to set the battery down and plug it in right on top of that. And once you do that, you're going to notice that this thing lights up immediately. So apparently they will at least occasionally ship in the on position. And as soon as I attached the battery here, I saw a flashing light and I kind of worried for a second. And then I thought, well, you know, it's just an LED, not a big deal. But it really kind of took me by surprise. Now getting this thing lined up can be a chore. You're going to have to be very careful, and of course, as I stated earlier, if you pre-fold that little flex cable down there, you'll have a much easier time with it than I did. Alright, so we got everything lined up straight. I went ahead and plugged the battery in right on top of that connector, which is sitting on top of the battery terminal, literally just sitting there until you get it plugged in. So you just have to kind of keep it straight. And there you can see that I saw a flash of light going on behind there. Wasn't sure it was happening, but went ahead and got the battery stuck down. And we have got past most of the difficult part of this procedure. Of course, you're going to see here shortly how we install the adhesive. So if you've got that piece, you want to stick around for that. Otherwise, we can go ahead and reinstall the screen. And I will go through those steps so you can see the procedure again, just in case you're not completely familiar with how that works. And if we flip the phone over at this point, I know it's very difficult to see on video, but please take my word for it. This thing is turned on. It is actually turning, you know, flashing on and off very slowly. It's kind of a pulsating uh, display that it gives you. And there are numerous ones that you can go through. I'll show those again also at the end of the video. But you can see there's kind of a different mode it's set in here. It's flashing different colors. In any case, uh, just kind of demonstrating that with the phone turned off, you will be able to see this thing light up and you can actually turn it on and off by double tapping the logo itself. And if you give it a single press, it will change to a different mode. Now from here, you want to go around the frame and the display and make sure that you remove all of the old adhesive so we have a nice clean surface to work with. And then we can install our new water resistant seal. I'm going to use a plastic pry tool and a pair of tweezers to carefully go around the edges and make sure we have all that old stuff cleaned up. Now from here, if you have one of these, these are awesome. They've made great improvements over the previous generation. These are much easier to work with. Uh, just a side note, remember that we do want to disconnect that battery. If you haven't already done so, make sure your battery is unplugged before you plug the screen in. That can definitely cause you some problems. So once we have this thing out of the bag, you'll see there are several different layers to this adhesive. And it's a little hard to explain. I think if you just watch, you'll see what I'm talking about. But as you peel it apart, it will become apparent where this thing's supposed to lay down in the correct position. Because you can see they have a cutout up at certain areas that match up on the inside of the phone. And it should peel off in a way that you can lay this down inside of the frame as opposed to installing it onto the display itself. Now getting this thing aligned for the sides is not too big of a deal, but the upper and lower ends can be misleading. If you put it flush up against the edge of the frame, you'll probably come up short on the other end of the phone. So you want to take a look at both ends and see exactly how much space you have to work with so you're not kind of, you know, just off center a bit. But from here, once we get this thing installed and just kind of lay it down, you'll see there's another sheet that we can grab a hold of. And this is what I really love about this particular piece of adhesive. You can peel off the inner part of this plastic and it's still going to leave a wax, I guess whatever you call this uh, non-sticky paper attached to the display, attached to the adhesive on the inside. So this way we can still work with getting the display installed, plugged in, connecting the battery, get all the screws inside and everything. And then we go back and peel off this final piece of plastic that goes around the edges. So this makes life much easier than it was working with the adhesives for the iPhone 6 and the 6S and the 6S Plus. I'm sorry, not the 6. The 6S and the 6S Plus obviously didn't have that with the 6s. However, if you want to add that to your customer's phones or to your own phone, it certainly doesn't hurt to add this adhesive onto your iPhone 6 and you can increase the, kind of the amount of water resistance that you have. Of course, you'll still have the problem 
where, uh, you know, your SIM card tray and your speaker and your microphone, those are all kind of entry points for moisture to get inside. So, uh, you know, but any little bit helps and it will definitely help keep your screen attached. Now you can see I am disconnecting the battery. We want to make sure we do that before we put the screen back on. All right, so we're going to do the reverse of the removal. Go ahead and plug in this cable here at the top. And these are kind of a bit awkward. So sometimes I'll just take it and plug it in this way to kind of get it in the right position. Remember that little horseshoe loop is going to be facing the bottom of the phone and that's the top. If you put that in upside down, you can have problems. So you want to make sure it looks just like that. Let me get my weight here so I can prop this guy up. And then we're going to go ahead and install these two cables. One and two. And of course, before we attach the battery, we want to get this upper panel on because that one is easy to put in. Now, remember, as I said, once you line this up, it doesn't really sit flat on its own because there's a rubber cushion right by the camera kind of holding it you know, kind of pushes it back up. So you're gonna have to do some maneuvering to make that stay in the right spot. Uh, but once you do, as soon as you get one of these screws started, and I don't recommend you tighten them down, you know, uh, they're never really gonna be torqued very hard, but you wanna just get this threaded and not even finger tighten it yet, because that way we can move this thing around if it's not lined up straight. Anytime I'm working with a panel if it has two or more screws, I like to get all the screws just threaded. And once you do, then again, you can just finger tighten. So these, you don't want to put super tight by any means. You just want to turn them until you feel it stop and then you're done. Uh, and that is especially true of those tri-lobe screws because they are a pain once they get stripped. Okay, so I've got these two plugged in. I'm going to connect the battery. And then we are going to add this little foam pad onto the back so that theoretically at least it will add some additional pressure behind where the battery is plugged in. Now I'm not really convinced that this is completely necessary. It came with the kit so I'm going to go ahead and include it and maybe over time this would be um, an issue but as you saw when we first put this thing together it started flashing immediately so I really question whether or not we really need to add that foam piece in there but it shouldn't do any harm so I'm gonna go ahead and include that and from here we'll go ahead and put the rest of the screws into the phone Now when you're sure that everything is in the right position, it is time to close the phone up. You don't want to have to do this twice because obviously we would have to reinstall that adhesive on the front. But what I love about this is that there's now a tab right at the top and you can just kind of pull that and start lifting and it will remove that last piece of anti-stick layer plastic or whatever you want to call it from around the perimeter. So at this point, just make sure that nothing makes contact with that adhesive. It's actually in two chunks, which is even better because you pull off the one that's closest to us. And then we're gonna go around and get the last piece that goes on the opposite side where the display goes in. So as you pull this up, again, remember we get one shot at this. Once you stick it down, you can't really pull it back off and start over. So I'm gonna keep the display separated from the housing, pull off that last strip. Then remember, we've got to kind of, we sort of have to wedge it in from the top and close it from the right hand side of the phone to the left at the same time. So it's just one of those maneuver things that you kind of get used to. But as you do it, you'll see we'll go in at the top right hand corner there first. Make sure all those tabs go under the frame. And from there, we push the, the display towards the top end of the phone, set everything down and just work your way around. And once it sits in the right position, we'll put the last two screws, those pentalobes down at the bottom, and we will have our nice, cool looking, customized iPhone 7 with a flashing logo. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.